The King's Beard by Tish Robby, a Dr. Seuss book. In the kingdom of Lyme, for a very long time, a new king was yearly elected. But though many had tried, their success was denied, for each year the same man was selected. Now the one who would rule needn't do well in school, didn't have to be tallest or strongest. He could be a jewel or a fibulous fool, but his beard must by far be the longest. And so good King Lindy remained on the throne, even though no one thought he was clever, for his beard did begin on the tip of his chin and stretched into the distance forever. That night, at the party to honor their king, Elwood the jester suggested they sing. To Lindy of Lyme, a great ruler so rare, from the tips of his toes to the ends of his hair, to Lindy the monarch whom everyone feared, because of the length of his marvelous beard. King Lindy looked on with a tear in his eye, as Elwood sang notes that were soaring on high. Your grace, a voice called, if you please, if I may, I must interrupt. I have something to say. Now who would dare stop the sweet song of the jester? None other than Yertle, the great crowd unrester. For surrounded by hair, Yertle had not a one. To be hairless in lime, well, it isn't much fun. I fear, Yertle cried, I have terrible news. Oh, sire, I'm scared to the soles of my shoes. Away to the west in the kingdom of Nug. There's a king, name of Nugal, a lout and a lug, who claims that his beard is much longer than yours is. Indeed, this King Nugal just simply adores his. King Lindy stood up and his knees started shaking. He spoke in a voice that was creaking and quaking. He straightened his crown and he raised his head high. King Nugal, cried Lindy, is telling a lie. I never heard mention of Nugal before. No beards longer than mine is. We must declare war. Now wait, Elwood gasped in dismay and alarm. War's a serious thing. It could do us great harm. Before you do that, Yertle urged, you should know that King Nugal of Nug is a dangerous foe. His eyes emit fire. His claws are immense. His breath reeks of fish and his crown's full of dents. Why, his robe looks as if it cost twenty-three cents. He's worse than a weasel or snithery sneasel. His forehead is lumpy, his armpits are damp, his earlobes are bumpy, he even looks grumpy on the Nuggian national stamp. Perhaps, he continued, it's time to find out what King Nugal of Nug could be bragging about. Your beard, good King Lindy, has always been treasured. But actually, well, it has never been measured. We need to determine your beard's exact length. Then we'll go to King Nugal and show him our strength. That is true, said the king, but who's up to the task? It could take a long time. It's a great deal to ask. I'll go, Elwood offered. Sire, please, cause I never have ventured outside of the kingdom, not ever. I fear, said the king, you must go a long distance, and so on this journey you'll need some assistance. My beard's not like any on other men's faces, and needs careful grooming in hard-to-reach places, especially out past Glenidrian Glade, where it hasn't been combed since I started first grade, and rumors are raging of unwanted guests, that flocks of bing-bonga birds use it for nests. The Wickersham brothers will travel with you. They are excellent barbers and quite funny too. And they really do wonders with unruly hair. But be cautious, you may face great danger out there. Next morning, precisely at quarter past eight, the party set off with one Wickersham late. He had to go back for his super do goo Great can, said Elwood, but what does it do? The Wickershams showed him. They sprayed a spuzz whizzy, whose hair, which was straight, turned all curly and frizzy. 
Neat trick, Elwood said as he measured with care, while the Wickershams curled everything that had hair. The long week slid by, then one day the beard led to the moat of a castle that loomed up ahead. Cross a bridge, through a gate, then a yard and what's more, the beard disappeared underneath the front door. They hid when they heard the shrill notes of a bugle. Make way, called a voice, for his highness King Nugal. They sneaked in and peeked, then gazed with wide eyes, as Elwood received a most shocking surprise. Not only was Nug quite a welcoming place, but King Lindy's beard ended on King Nugal's face. And King Nugal looked like their very own Lindy. They stared as he smiled at his sweet daughter Mindy. My dear, said the king, I've decided it's best if we give all our servants a much-needed rest. Of course, Daddy dear, Mindy kissed his kind cheek. They had only six days off all of last week. Elwood was troubled. This king was no lout. What could Yertle the turtle be talking about? He decided to speak. There was no other choice. But just then he heard a most worrisome voice. Sire, Yertle cried, you're surrounded by spies. I've seen them myself with my very own eyes. He pulled them from hiding. Your Majesty, please. Mindy made Elwood feel weak at the knees. This man is a spy sent by Lindy, your foe, to find out your secrets. Believe me, I know. Father, said Mindy, I think Yertle's wrong. This man has kind eyes. He seems quiet and strong. Yertle, gasped Elwood, what is it you've done? Are you trusted adviser to two kings or one? Silence, cried Nugal. I am not a dunce. They are spies. I have spoken. Now jail them at once. The poor weary guests were thrown into a cell. On the whole, Yerda laughed, I think that went well. If I play my cards right, things will fall into place, and a beard that is royal will grace my green face. Elwood, you see, when these kings go to war, the result will be chaos like never before, and when the smoke clears, I'll be king for all time. King Yertle the Turtle of Nug and of Lime. With that he was gone in his zip-trip invention, a secret he'd never had reason to mention. King Lindy, he cried, I've just come from the jester. He's measured your beard, and he finally confessed, sir, that things out in Nug are much worse than we feared. It seems that King Nugal has stolen your beard. He claims that it's his and not yours, and what's more, he challenges you to a nug tug of war. So war was declared and the tug was begun, though no one believed it would be any fun. The Lymans all pulled with their mane and their might, but in nug they pulled back, and they stretched the beard tight. Ouch! cried King Lindy. King Nugal screamed, Ow! This war's a mistake. I must stop it, but how? Meanwhile, back in his cell, Elwood let out a sigh. It appears it is here we will stay till we die. I hope not, said Mindy. That would be a shame, for I have to admit that I'm glad that you came. Yertle's gotten our kingdoms locked into a fight, but I can't help believing the war isn't right. I know in my heart, though you may think I'm wrong, that if the kings met, they might just get along. You're right, Elwood told her. I know what to do. Wickersham, spray me some super doo goo So they sprayed, and the bars that were sturdy and strong curled out of the way with a spring and a sprong. They ran to the war and arrived out of breath, hearing screeching and shrieking that scared them to death. Get out of our way, Elwood yelled. Let us through. Then they all began spraying the super doo goo The beard started curling all over the place, till Kings Lindy and Nugal were pulled. Face 
to face. As they stared at each other, a strange silence fell. Which king was which? There was no way to tell. The two were identically like one another, though neither had ever set eyes on the other. I wonder, said Nugal, have we the same mother? Are you, gasped King Lendy, my poor long-lost brother? Look, Bindi cried, on your hands there's a clue. Your rings are the same. You are brothers, it's true. King Lindy gasped, Biffy? King Nugal cried, Spiffy! I've traveled forever all over the earth, ever since we were parted the night of our birth. You're not missing or dead as I always had feared. You were here all along, at the end of my beard. I shouldn't have listened to what Yertle said. I should really have gotten to know you instead. He said you were wicked, and I went along, without thinking myself. Now I know that was wrong. Wait, Nugal asked. Was he green with a shell? Why, Yertle the turtle advised me as well. All eyes were on Yertle. He had to think fast. Now that, he said coolly, is all in the past. Stop, Elwood cried. You're forgetting one thing. All along it was Yertle who planned to be king. You're wrong, Yertle said. That is simply absurd. I don't want to be king, sires. I give you my word. Delivery, a voice cried, for someone named Yertle. Strange little guy, kind of looks like a turtle. The portrait you ordered, King Yertle the Great, and buddy, you still owe us nine ninety-eight. The following spring, on the 15th of May, in the kingdom of Nug, on a beautiful day, Elwood and Mindy became husband and wife, as she promised to laugh at his jokes all her life. And only one name was left off the long list of world-famous guests, though he never was missed. Yertle the turtle, whose one endless chore was sweeping the hair off the Wickersham's floor, and the more they kept cutting, the more he must sweep. Last I heard, Yertle's hair pile was ninety feet deep.